Dry media ground is a very, very versatile medium. In terms of surfaces that it can go on, it can go on paper, as you can see here. We also try it makes these beautiful aluminum panels. You could coat that if you want to do a drawing, on, work on this surface. There's also, we do bamboo panels, so it would go on wood. Uh, canvas as well would work with it. Uh, metal, you name it, it can go on it. And it accepts pigment beautifully. It is very fine, it's almost like sand. And it's called dry media ground because you can use it when you put it on and you can apply it to a surface and get it very smooth. Apply it with a palette knife and you would smooth it out with a brush, a dampened brush. And you would be able to create a surface that if you do pastel works or if you want to do drawings, it just creates a very fine, fine, fine grit that will accept any media and it's really fun to work with. And what I've been experimenting with is using it to create sort of textures where you have it applied in some areas and you don't, you get a bit of a resist where the actual surface of what's underneath reacts next to this very fine grade surface and you get some unexpected but yet beautiful textures and nuances. And then being able to draw on it after with either Conte, uh, graphite, or if you wanted pastel, whether it be oil or a chalk pastel. I'm a huge fan of rocks, as are most people, especially rocks that have been found by the water that are just all smooth and have worked the edges off, and they're just beautiful to touch. But they also are very hard, if you want to paint them, just to have like this blob and look like potatoes. But they actually have a very beautiful surface, and some of them have nice little striations in them. They have a history since a time, and bricks and sea glass are also another favorite to work with. And so that's why I thought this might be a good chance to play with the dry media ground to capture some of those surface textures. For now, I'm just going to actually just work on one shape. Similar to what the rocks are, just sort of taper to the bottom and like this, and then just show how I would apply the dry media ground. You can use a brush with it, but it does leave the impressions of the hairlines. So I really like to use a palette knife. And again, you would pick a palette knife appropriate to the scale of what you're working in. I wouldn't use um, a great big palette knife for this size. I am using uh, just about an inch and a half, two inch chisel because I want to be able to control the points again. And I am going to start working from the inside of my shape because I want to have a nice edge. So I'm pushing it, just pushing it along. It's very easy to manipulate. But I'm leaving, you can see here, some of these areas, I love that naturally deckled edge and some of these overlapping where I'm gonna get some textures happening. I'm going to leave it like that. I'm gonna come around here. Again, it's similar to applying the modeling paste, but it's not as thick as the modeling paste. You can just sort of hear the fine grit. What I'm going to do is leave the center more open because if I want to get that three-dimensional quality, I'm going to add more color to the base and color to the top. And that's all I would do for now. And I'll let that dry. Okay? And then I'll be able to go into it with paint. Hi. Now let's drop some paint onto this surface. It's always exciting when you first put color onto the dry media ground if you've left some paper because the paint as it lays down on the surface is accepted differently and I always find that quite exciting. We are using uh, TriArt's Low Viscosity Acrylics for this. And I am starting with my Payne's Gray because it's a very natural, it's a, a dark bluish gray that I think ties in nicely with the color palette of the stones. I'm going to put out some transparent brown as well. And I'm going to use a graphite gray, uh, which will be beautiful with these rocks. And with the LV paints, they do need shaking before you use them. So I'm just gonna shake that up a bit. You can see now that it's all consistent the color. I'm just going to put some of that out right here. I'll move this out of the way so you can see it. 
There we go. All right, let's have some fun. I've got myself out one of the Triart acrylic watercolor brushes, a nice filbert uh, in about a three quarter inch. It's a number 18. Then I have a medium size and I've got a small size brush. And these all have a nice fine hair that I'm going to work with. So let's start with a bigger brush. I'm gonna start with my Payne's Gray. You can see I'm just adding a lot of water, just going in just to test it. And I'm going to come in right under here The bottom of the one rock, oh, look at how beautiful that is. Now it goes on. I'm working from the inside of the rock. Get it a bit darker in there, get some bleeding happening. Use some to pool. And that's where you can see where it's hitting the paper a little differently. I rotate that. And I don't want to box myself in too much at this point. So I'm just going to put some areas of color down as sort of markers react to the texture that's been created by the dry media ground. I'm going to go through the whole section with the same color at first. Now I'm just going to use straight water so that it's very light in here. Again, leaving some of the white to breathe, the white of the paper. Look at the intensity of that color. Maybe I'll leave that to be a graphite gray, and then maybe just one of these, I'm going to add a bit of the Payne's gray to it. Okay, and for this rock here, I'm going to use the washed brick as an inspiration. So I'm gonna go into the transparent gold oxide color, add a bit of water, and then just, again, concentrating on the bottom where there would be a shadow. Testing my colors there, but if I'm going to go dark, it's going to be at the bottom to give it some weight. Oh yeah. I'm gonna make that a little bit more intense down here. Again, I might just take my brush, clean it, and see it beautifully, it lifts up too. But I can get a very natural blend in there if I want it. Because this doesn't have as much interest, let's say, as the rocks in terms of coloring, I'm gonna really lighten up that center to give it more of a three-dimensional quality. And then, now I'm gonna do the top one. I'm gonna try using the, just the graphite gray. Again, trying to keep it in the same intensity level as the Payne's gray, because I don't want it to be too dark too fast. That back. And I'm just going to now go with a bit of the transparent brown. And I'm going to go in on top of the gold oxide over here. Again. Oh, it goes so beautifully on the paper. Mm. There, just adding a bit of the third color. It's a rule of thumb. Any works that I do is that uh, sort of having at least three colors interacting be sort of the magical number for everything. Because I didn't put this on totally smooth like you would if you were using it for a, a, a pastel ground, I'm working with some of the texture I've created. And I'm going to go in now with my brush and accentuate some of those textured areas by lifting off the color. It gives it a very natural, organic feel. But unlike if I was working with on watercolor or on paper, it's not going to get, um, it's not going to reconstitute because these are acrylics and it's going to give me that nice, powerful, potent color. It's not all seeping into the paper and being absorbed at this point. Okay, and I'm just going to leave that for now. You can use pencil on this, you can use Conte, graphite, charcoal, any dry media, it accepts it beautifully, chalk pastel as well for highlights. Right now I'm just using a soft leaded pencil in this area. Went through if I want some details, depends if you want to have some fine hatch lines on there. Put your hatch lines on or if you wanted it to be blended more. It's just, the dry media just grabs onto the surface 
of the medium. And here, I'm gonna go back in here, add some more of the red Conte in here. I can almost do like a dry <laughs> effect there where it's catching on the textured area. Dry meat right in there like that. Being able to do a combination of paint and drawing is really satisfying. I like uh, using some of the softer dry media because it's almost like I, my hands are I'm imagining touching the stones to get that rounded feeling. It's much more natural for me to work that way. Probably for you as well. To not just be limited to your brush. And even though it's, it's a bit misleading, even though it's called dry media ground, it accepts liquid media as well, which makes it so, so exciting and versatile. And you can just work on this as much as you want. Might even do a bit of outlining just to give it some grounding, but I do like these natural lines that have happened. And then it's just up to you how far you want to take this. But as you can see, I'm going to take it in. See? Three quick steps and it's you've got yourself a working image. If you do have some products of ours you want to know more about, please do let us know and subscribe to our channel. We'd like to hear from you.